Uh, first, welcome to Giving Tuesday to our, our chat here, and uh, we're glad that you could make it uh, live or hopefully watching this uh, sometime later today or another day. Uh, we really appreciate all of you that enjoy and watch the camera, the Flyway camera here particularly, and since GSB is so close and in the same pool area of the Mississippi River, we're going to talk about GSB too. So um, let's get right to that. Uh, um, these amazing cameras that we have, uh, uh, GSB is definitely special to me. Uh, it's how I got connected with uh, the Raptor Resource Project and Bob because of the historic Falcon Irie on Great Spirit Bluff on our family property. So uh, just uh, it's been a very interesting journey here starting as a cam operator and an admirer of, of Bob and and. Amy and the RRP folks uh, every year when they came and then uh, um, starting to be a cam operator and running a channel for a few years <laughs> yep and then uh, assisting with some technology and then uh, and then directing Raptor resource projects so uh, very interesting with great spirit buff specifically um, and I'll remind you guys that the highway noise from i90 really and just the wanting to have that experience of just sitting out on the flyway and no or being able to see you and you can just hear everything that's going on to just uh almost like cheating you know right. sitting out there and being able to hear that that was really the driving force for wanting to do the flyway camera um and all the years off season with the falcons that we would see this the tundra swans and everything so well let's start wrapping up what happened this year <laughs> so very interesting year every year it's something new and we never know what's going to happen this year was was it definitely fit that definition we had territorial battles with females with newman Nova. and the bachelorette yep. oh my god <laughs> <laughs> uh they, they they definitely gave us a lot of we always watch and we're wondering are we going to have a season this year <laughs> <laughs> um, and falcons are pretty dependable, and especially they have been at Great Spirit Bluff over the years, but now we're getting to see all the filled in, you know, details. But uh, um, after the fighting with uh, the Bachelorette, uh, or the Bachelor, and uh, Newman, and no, both Nova and Nina uh, exiting and not coming back, we had a brand new female. And that was the real treat, was for us to get to see a brand new female, two-year-old, uh, lay eggs for the first time, uh, pick a mate for the first time. Yeah. Uh, Newman was very uh, Artist. Re repetitive. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he Every was time they felt persistent. Bad broadcasting that channel. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he did what he needed to do to really kind of uh, 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 get things going. And that bond developed and we saw him spend some more time in the nest box basically i always joke that the male falcon is is when they do their courtship the bowing each upping ritual it's like here's where i want you to lay the eggs here's where i want you to lay the eggs and as soon as she starts repeating that and they they do that then the male will just exit out of there and jump and fly away so um he spent much more time there um so we had eggs uh they were not very Pat, the pattern of every three days, two to three days for laying was not uh, um, very consistent. We yeah. had like 10 days in between. It was an interesting um, year that way. Three eggs, the incubation wasn't consistent all the time. Pretty delayed incubation for one of the eggs, but all three of them hatched. Um, and we got to see uh, 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 Zoe. We named this new female Falcon Zoe. We got to see her learn how to feed her young. And it was kind of hard. We, we see this... The, the reality of what goes on in nature and um, no schools, no classes um, with the, the mom and dad falcon learning how to go through contractions. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or even how to feed, because to me a real odd thing right. was she clearly wanted to feed, but when she would like bring in a whole bird and put yeah. it down in front of a hatching, like, hey, yeah. I was like, oh, Zoe. That was, it was, it was kind of sad and, and really amusing at the same time, like, here's the bird leg. Laying it at this brand new baby that's eyes are closed and mouth is open, waiting for little bitty chunks of food. So she did figure it out by the third hatch, and uh, um, so we were uh, we were lucky to have one falcon to watch. Um, 
the the really hot weather, the the high ninety degree weather, and just some of the incessant shuffling. And then we found out that uh, the young, uh, which we call Chance, um, she did have an infestation of Pithoboscids. So Amy and I went down on that really warm day, um, and I, I remember we were we were commenting on how. So we had never seen a human before. Right. So we were coming down into the nest box, and we looked at the camera. I forgot this. It's like this. she was still in the nest box and uh, uh, throwing rocks on there, doing some falcon noises, doing, then doing some human noises, and then kind of uh, we, we got right down to the nest, next nest box, and I think our ropes were hitting onto the nest box, and she just made a beeline and headed out just screaming for a little bit, and then she... She just was gone while we were working. Um, so we got to treat uh, Chance, and we weren't sure if Chance was going to make it. No, no. Um, I, think I, I was watched, real worried. watched that camera all night and well, following morning, and it was hidden underneath the lip. And when that little head and beak popped up uh, the next morning, I uh, um, was very relieved, at least to see that, that uh, she had made it through the night. We did find out that she was female, and we did the banding. And... We found out that Zoe was a very aggressive. Very, the John. Next time, <laughs> John found out that Zoe was very aggressive. The next time that she saw a human, um, she uh, let me know. And uh, <laughs> one of our fans, uh, Dave Reynolds, uh, um, has the uh, shirt that has the holes in it uh, to prove it. So that does happen. Amy knows probably more than anybody else. She's she's got very holy. Uh, work uniform shirts. Sacred, really. <laughs> and I should say before we go on to the flyway, I want to thank all of you that provided feedback uh, really early on that something was going funny was going on with Chance beyond, you know, kind of the issues with Zoe because right. certainly we were watching, but, but you noticed that uh, Chance was falling over and some of you remarked on that she was sort of turning black, which is from excrement from the hippobosids. That was really helpful to us diagnosing the problem. So thank you. Yeah. And I think everything is coming through. I just verified that uh, the feed is live on, but delayed on my phone. And I can hear myself, so we're doing good here. Thanks. Um, well, let, you know, let's move on to the flyway. Um, first, uh, this is such a neat project. I, I, it was kind of like a dream at first when it uh, was just in the concepts was, how can we get a hold of uh, the Fish and Wildlife Service right, folks right, right. at Bryce Prairie and who are the partners going to be? Um, we found and learned out about the Bryce Prairie Conservation Association. Uh, Tim Miller and the folks at the National Wildlife and Fish Service uh, um, and Kent, Kendra uh, basically got us hooked up with uh, that group and a great group to work with, uh, um, especially Mark and uh, Fritz and others that help us get out there to do work uh, when we need to, the locals. Um, so. Uh, just this this window, I think, uh, uh, just like the eagle nest, but this is a totally different uh, setting, really. Yeah. You know, an eagle nest is is you're pretty much going to see eagles. You're going to see some starlings. You're going to see some stuff going on around the nest. Um, this is migration. This is multi species. This is interaction. This is really, um, it's it's such a treat to see what happens through the season, um, even. You know, the fox and the, uh, him, the I guess it'd be coyotes, not wolves. That we know <laughs> right. there's probably a few down there, but um, they're not this far south that we've seen on cam yet. Um, we talked about just all the different species that we had, have had 68 different birds, seven insects. Uh, cam operators do a great job of showing yeah. us yeah, they do. Uh, some close-ups and, and showing how good these cameras are. Six mammals, three reptiles, one amphibian. Um, some of my favorite reptiles to watch are those turtles on the logs. And oh, the turtles are great. <laughs> so um, it isn't just raptors. It isn't just waterfowl. It, it really is a, uh, um, a community of different species out in the great, great Mississippi River, the mighty Mississippi. So... Uh, so thanks to, uh, initially we talked to explore.org, uh, Charlie Annenberg and Jonathan and uh, Candace and crew uh, about uh, setting this camera up and they were fully supportive. And uh, um, with Bryce Prairie Conservation Association and the National Wildlife and Fish Service, uh, um, it's just, it's been a great, great thing, so. And I wanted to bring up 
two sort of cool things about what we've seen on the flyway. Our longest distance migrant is a tiny little bird called the American Golden Plover. It's not necessarily real noticeable. You might be looking at eagles or sandhill cranes, and there'll be this little bird running around in the flats. <laughs> but that little bird travels 8,000 miles or more from its nesting habitat up in the real high Arctic, uh, down usually east across the United States in the fall, down the seaboard, and then down into the grasslands of uh, Uruguay and Argentina, and then it comes back up the Mississippi River Amazing. in the spring. So uh, imagine this tiny little bird, 16,000 miles or more per year for migration. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, it is. It and is. then our weirdest sighting, you want to talk about that yeah. one? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, um, I think we found out, and this is a really cool thing, too, is reporting some of the stuff that's coming up on eBird. Yeah. Right? So uh, a lot of times when we, we see something, we'll verify what we think it is. Amy and others will check to see on eBird if anybody has reported it, them in the area. And sometimes the sightings that we've got on camera are the, are the, first, are the first or or the first in this immediate time time setting that somebody has seen it in the, the La Crosse area, the La Crosse, La Crescent area. So um, a black bellied whistling duck, which was way far north from its t typical territory. Yeah, um, was it's about 1,200 miles out of range, which yeah. is... Right. The cam operators contacted me, and I was like, no offense, I know some of you are watching, and your idea is really good, but I was beyond skeptical. And then I saw the picture. They're unmistakable. It was like, what is that doing here? Like, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. But also, what? It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what are we doing on time here? I'm trying to... Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, really, really neat. And, and we have, we got uh, uh, Tom Presby and others... Uh, that we go to as our yes. resources, some ornithologists that uh, are birders who, who uh, you know, that's part of their uh, uh, um, their life and and getting out and seeing one bird and taking a road trip just to see that bird in an area. Um, ornithologists and birders uh, um, uh, here carefully doing that from afar um, have some pretty neat events and sightings that they watch over. So. Um, so what was your favorite sighting or thing about the fly? Like, is there a moment that stands out for you or is it just sort of everything or like, what do you think? It's impossible to choose the best or one, but one of the favorite things that I like to see and, and, uh, I've got a, a little video of it that we could watch. I think we're kind of running out of time here. Um, so we can queue it up so you can watch it later, but, uh, um, is just this time of year when the ice starts to form. And the current is still going through. I love it when you can hear that water just in the background. The eagles, typically eagles and maybe some thunder swans in the background, are sitting there just, you know, in the sun, sunning and maybe preening a little bit and drying out in the sun. And you watch these ice chunks floating by. And once or twice we've actually seen a bird, you know, on an <laughs> iceberg yeah. moving by. Um, that, that's, that's one of my favorites. I love watching the, the eagles go by, you know, on the little ice chunks. Okay. I didn't even think about that. That's cool. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Yeah. How about you? Um, I had a really hard time picking out a reason for this, you know, like a specific moment for the same reason that you did. So I think like, I think about it in seasons in the spring. My favorite thing is seeing all the ducks in their bright breeding plumage. You blink yeah. and they're gone because they want to get north. Uh, in the summer, I just like seeing all the inhabitants. The turtles are a favorite mm -hmm. for me, too. And it's kind of neat to see how the rhythm of the river changes as animals grow, breed the next generation, and everybody starts getting ready for winter. Like, the flyway gives us such a great picture yeah. of that. Yeah, and does. then in the fall, of course, it's migration again, but it's such a different migration in the spring because birds get together in big flocks, and you see these just massive flocks come in. I remember, yeah. I think you gave me, gave me an email when the thunder swans came in. You're like, they're here. Like, yeah. I was so excited. It was so fun. <laughs> yeah. Um. But then you see the pulse of the river slow, like John mentioned, with the ice, and it freezes over, and it's like all the life goes away, but we know it's still there beneath the surface waiting. And every once in a while, we get to see it, say, in the form of a coyote wandering across the ice. A beaver. Yeah. Or an eagle or a beaver. So yeah. um, for me, I think really my favorite thing is that great seasonal, seasonal sweep of the flyway and how we get to yeah. see everything pass. Right. Return migration and some of the flooding and things like that we've seen there. Uh, and that brings up a good point, uh, um, just talking about, uh, you know, we started this camera up and um, looked at our areas from the, the falcon cam as to, you know, we watch these thunder swans and we right. watch these huge populations of coots and others. I mean, it's just, 
uh, hundreds of thousands of birds out there. It's just crazy amazing to see these, you know, it's just like these black waves in the water. And the then mega they, flocks. they take off. Um, uh, so uh, um, seeing that, we knew, you know, here's a target area where we wanted to put the camera. Right. And at the time that we put the camera out in the solar panels, they were on the very edge, you know, of the of tip of an island. Um, and the two flooding years, 2019 and 2020, I believe. Um, let's see, got that right? Yep. 20, 2019 was especially yeah, bad, but 2020 was pretty wet yeah, too. Yeah, so those two years, there was enough sediment that came through that, or if you look at a satellite view, it looks just like the delta of a big river system. Um, so that sediment coming through actually built that island out. So uh, the cameras are good enough that we can see out two, three hundred, four hundred feet um, and get pretty good images. So one of the things that I'd like to do is, is restore that. So we're a little bit closer to where uh, uh, the larger groups of pelicans, eagles, swans right. um, are, are sitting. So. One thought is to put another pole further out, tie it into the, into the existing system, and we're looking at possibly doing that this coming summer uh, for the fall uh, migration. And we've got a new camera with a little bit better zoom, um, and it sits on top <laughs> of the your pole. Cameras. <laughs> so, and you guys are key in helping us do this kind of stuff. So we couldn't we couldn't look at you know, making better equipment uh, choices and installations and things like that without the support that comes from, from you all. So um, thanks so much. So that's, those are some of the things that we're looking at. Um, I, obviously anything that we do will be in consultation and in approval with uh, National Wildlife and Fish Refuge uh, folks and where we put things or upgrade. Um, you'll notice that uh, in the winter days when the days are gray and we get a, a snow and a large number of uh, gray days, uh, the solar power goes down enough to storage in the batteries that we are probably going to end up putting up another solar uh, panel yeah, or two. Yeah, yeah. So we can leave the infrared, we have the infrared off now just to save on power through the night um, and give as many daylight hours as we can. So we'll probably uh, put another panel or two in and another couple batteries next year too. So. Um, Anyway, those are things that uh, donations um, for CAM upgrades and maintenance go to at the flyway. Yeah, so. and I'm also hoping, and I don't know how doable it is, to add an option for uh, you guys to, to maintain lists, kind of like American Birding Association does, of some of the stuff you're seeing on our CAM. First of all, it would help us to, to share ex uh, share sightings, which is important, you know, when you look at scientific research done by right. Ebert and others. Right. But second of all, not everybody can charter a plane and go into a swamp to see a bird. And I think people who can't do that should also have the ability to maintain their own lists and to share their own sightings. So that's something I'm still kind of trying to work out up here, but uh, right. that's something I hope to right. do more of next yep. year. And also super fun to read what you're saying in chat. Thank you. I am monitoring yes. it. So. Yes. Um, and uh, the, the, the Explore chat group, and I know they're collaborating with the CAM operators and you and our flyway group, you know, actually have that list going where you guys have recorded just about everything that you think that we've seen out there so far. Right, right. So uh, giving people an option to actually put their, uh, their observations in a database, uh, um, it's cool. So, um, well, we'll probably leave some time here for Q&A and stuff. So again, I just wanted to mention uh, um, how can you support the Raptor Resource Project? How can you support what we're doing? Uh, plenty of links on Facebook, on our website, for direct donations through PayPal, through our, our, our links through Get Network for Good is, and PayPal are our two main uh, um, ways. You can do it by mail to our P.O. Box address, P.O. Box 16 in Decorah. Um, you can order you know, some neat stuff like this. Uh, here's a flyway mug that was given to me by uh, as a gift. Sunset Dreamer designed this one, so, yeah, so we have stuff uh, in our store. If you click shop, yep, gonna, uh, you'll get there. I'm just going to show you quick as we talk over here. Um, the uh, This is the cover for the Mississippi River Flyway Cam for 2022. Um, our calendars are in process right now, and we should have them done and ready for ordering next week. So we got some great photos and things. We do 
make those for cost and then add a little bit on about five dollars just for for uh, profit for RRP uh, funding on those so if you buy those or a lot of this merchandise you're helping support the Raptor resource project that way um, so calendars uh, um, you know, specifically for the flyway here in Great Spirit Bluff uh, that we've talked to on this chat. Yep. Um, so uh, we've got some time here to kind of look at if there's any questions coming in. Yeah, if you guys have any questions at all, let us know. Uh, otherwise, we will say Yeah, and our mods, our mods are kind of working on things here, and I think we're live with that. So um, mods, if you can hear us. If you have seen any good questions that you think that we could answer, and I'm, I'm looking over here at, at uh, the chat. Wendy, I like your comments about the sunrises and the sunsets. They're one of my favorite things, too. They're just spectacular. Yeah, the, uh, it's, it never seems like it's quite like actually being there, but these cameras do sometimes really accentuate oh, yeah. the colors um, a little bit, a tad, so it gets you a little bit closer to... Um, the beauty that you actually see when you're out there. Um, and this cam, just like the Eagle cams and like the others, um, the ability for folks who cannot get outdoors or get out that often, um, you know, this is really a window for them to participate and to connect and to be able to see this. And, and the audio is, is such a huge component of that, uh, yeah. to hear what's going on and hear the sounds of nature and the pulse of what's going on. Um, and even, you know, some of the man-made things, hearing the train up in the distance. You know, I know a lot of you like barges. That was actually kind of a surprise <laughs> to me. Was I mean, I, I like barges, right? Like, the walk I and think big process, things are yeah, cool. Right. So I was sort of gratified to see how many yeah. other people were like, yay! Yeah. Yep, so let's see if there's any other questions. Uh, Sally, we do have big coffee mugs over at the store, so if you go to raptorresource.org right. and click the shop link, I've got I got some dec new decor and north stuff in there. John's got the calendars coming, and I'm going to be adding some GSB and flyway things, hopefully this week, yes. In our couple months here where things are a little bit slower, but not much. <laughs> a little bit slower. There's, well. there's a new Eagle Cam uh, <laughs> system to work on, and... Um, some other things, but um, maybe we will put together a flyway uh, chart oh, or should. something like that, a themed uh, thing for the flyway, and maybe one for Great Spirit Bluff. So it's it's been a long time here, so maybe we've been thinking about it for a long time. Maybe we can get that done. So um, and I uh, we'll see what happens, but you know, here's just a shot of the calendar from last year, Great Spirit Bluff, um, and then. You saw the image. Oh, actually, I could show that to you, but I don't have it queued up. But we do have an image uh, selected for our, our Great Spirit Bluff uh, calendar for 2022 also. So, like I said, those will be out next week, ready for order. Um, and any other questions? EJ, you got to get with me on the screenshots and not on this group. <laughs> Give me an email. Um, folks love the cameras. Uh, yep. Um, Maybe, like I said, next year we may have two cameras and be able to choose uh, which is the closest one to what we want to look at. So. Smokey in Harlem asks, about how much money will we need for another camera and the extra solar panels? So uh, we're, we're actually putting solar panel, a full system in um, at another uh, Eagle Nest uh, here this winter. And the full system is around six to $8,000. So that's... That's the solar panels, the batteries, um, and the equipment uh, um, to provide solar power and things like that. We're just going to be adding on that. So um, the, a big part of that is is just the labor and the manpower to put things yeah, in. Yeah, so it's an unbelievable. What do we call it? Like 80 pounds of concrete when we did the first couple pulls. Right. I mean, it's right. the amount of work is hard to describe. <laughs> right. And so, coordination. So the coordination and the work, um, obviously, um, you know. Amy's time, my time, anybody else who's uh, uh, helping um, as a contractor to work those those labor costs. Uh, when we bring Kike Arnold in, you know, there's a good example when we bring Kike in for our eagle nest work and our climbing work and help him, uh, or he helps us with that. Uh, um, those costs are folded in there too. So, um, camera is around three to four thousand. 
um, for the type that we're putting out here. Right. Um, that's on the cheaper end. If you went with Canon, Sony, you know, some of those you're more in the fifteen to twenty thousand dollar range. We have not been using those uh, uh, brands. Uh, we'd like to, but it's just uh, um, and it's then a little out of our cost range. Beth had asked about a camera on the on the Eagle Nest uh, near the Eagle Valley Flyway. I'm not actually sure what's still down there because the original nest tree fell. So we right. that would be something we would talk to Brett about. Um, I certainly can't say that we wouldn't yeah. do it. It's just not in our plans right now. Yeah. We can see some eagle nests, one way across towards the Iowa side of the river floodplain, um, and then you know some will perch there, um, and we watch those with uh, the Eagle Valley Cam, um, but uh, we don't have any plans to to cam up any of those nests down there. So, all right. Well, I think we probably better get going. All right. I'm yeah. going to watch the chat page for a little bit after John uh, shuts this down and prepares for our next streaming adventure at, what, Decora North? <laughs> oh, no. I feel embarrassed. I don't yeah. have the time. Um, uh, Decora North is, is uh, noon. Okay. So yeah. so and for Decora our next stream at Decora North, and then Decora will be 1 o'clock. Thank you, John. Right. right on the hour <laughs> for about, 50, about half an hour each. So, um, again, thanks so much to you all. Thanks for your support. Um, we couldn't do this without you all. And um, we were talking about the Falcons, um, uh, an amazing year. Record 80 young Falcons banded oh, yeah. up and down the flyway. And I can't, I can't from, believe we got it all done. Uh, Northern Minnesota all the way down to Peoria, Illinois, <laughs> yeah. you know, splitting up into two groups and stuff. So, oh, we actually had three teams out this year because yeah. there was me. I mean, there was kind of like everybody, you and I, and then right. there was you and Ken, and then there was Dave and Sophia. Right. So I we've never run a three team year before ever. Right. So um, you know that's a huge part of uh, what Bob was all about and and the recovery efforts with the Peregrine Falcons uh, uh, back to their their iries along the Mississippi River, um, the natural iries along with the man made ones yeah. that we yeah. still maintain that urban population and have our partners. So thanks to all your partners and all you fans. And keep the questions coming and keep watching. We're still watching the tail end. We should hear some great uh, footage with thunder swans and, and maybe an eagle or two floating along on an ice <laughs> <laughs> We'll see. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Right. We'll see you later. Bye.